Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalia Lee. I'm an indie author and a full-time freelance editor. And today we are talking about author websites. This is the video topic that won in my last poll. So make sure that you are voting in my polls if you wanna have a say in the next video that I film. Um, I Those go live in my community center every week. So make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell icon and vote in my polls. So I have tips for things that you'll want to include on your author website and then also just additional things to consider when you're working on it so whether you are you know maybe just now getting started on your author website or you want to revise your author website or maybe you just want to make sure you have all of the right information on there this is the video for you all right Let's get started. Okay, so if I'm looking down, it's just because I'm looking at this big list of things that I wrote down. So the first thing I wanna talk about is purchasing your domain name. So I, I think that's what it's called. Um, so that's like my author website is www.natalialee.com. It's not like www.natalialee.weebly.com. And of course you can start with that, you know, without having to pay any money to purchase that. Um, and that's what I did at first when I was very first getting started. I didn't, um, you know, pay to have like just NataliaLee.com, but I do recommend that you do that if you are able. It just feels so much more professional when you don't have like .weebly.com or .wix.com or .blogspot or whatever it is. It's really nice if it's just, you know, your name. Dot com. And then that leads into the next thing to consider, and that is what you want your website to be. My suggestion is to use your author name, you know, or your pen name. I have had, or I have come across some author websites that are like the, the name of the book or the name of the book series. And you can do that if you want to. But the idea here probably is that you want to write multiple books maybe you want to try to make a passive income off of this so you want a place where all of your work can be kind of categorized and it can be um, displayed to the world and displayed to your potential readers so if you choose a website that's like you know for me pistoldaisy.com or songofthedryad.com it's like that's just one book and I'm gonna have to maintain that entire website probably pay for the domain name just for one book you know and instead I would recommend just using your pen name or your author name and having all of your books on that one website and then if you really want to maybe you could make some like spin-off websites if there's a lot of information you know especially like extra fun information that you want to give readers maybe you could make separate websites for those but i do suggest having that one main author website that everything links back to rather than needing to have different websites for every book or every series that you write so that would be like that's like my number one and number two tips those are my first and second tips about um you know paying for your domain name and choosing the right domain name okay now what do you want to actually put on your author website. I have, I went over a bunch of different author websites when I was making this up and I was looking at, okay, what things do most author websites have in common? And there's definitely a few things that the majority of author websites have and that I suggest you put on yours. The first is your upcoming release. What book is coming out next? You know, what book should people be getting excited about and some things that you'll want to include for this book definitely the cover like once you've done the cover reveal because a good book cover can get people so excited um the release date for that book so people know what date to look forward to and then probably a blurb or a tagline you know a pull quote something exciting something that'll tell readers a little bit about that book again so that they know what it's about and they can get excited for it and then some additional links that you might want for that upcoming book on your website are an ARC reader sign up if you already have that going, um, a link to Amazon or Goodreads once you have those up, and then a pre-order link if you're doing that. So once you, you know, you have your upcoming release, probably smack dab top of the, you know, homepage is the first thing that people see and then give them links so that they can say, Hey, that book looks exciting. I'm going to click this link, go to Goodreads and add it to my, you know, 
TBR or I'm going to click the Amazon link and I'm going to go ahead and pre-order it. So give them a choice. Give them a way to move forward once they get excited about that book. And then the next thing is a list of all of your published books. So if you don't have any published books yet, that's fine. You'll definitely want that upcoming release um, on your website, but if you do have other published books, make sure you have those there. I do suggest putting the book covers on your website because like I said, book covers are such a good way to get people excited. They are very visual, beautiful, uh, so make sure you have those on there. And then just like with your upcoming release, you'll want a link for easy purchase. Any of the purchase books, somebody should be able to say, okay, I wanna buy now. And then they click that link and it immediately takes them to Amazon or Barnes and Noble or wherever you sell that book so that they can just go ahead and buy it. This would be a good place to link um, like signed copies. If you do signed copies of your books, make sure that there's an easy, clear link so that somebody can say, okay, I wanna purchase it and I wanna sign copy. Again, I click this link and it takes me exactly where I need to go. And then for those published books, you might consider putting like one or two or you know however many positive reviews that you've received. Like positive public reviews would be best so that people could actually go to Amazon or go to Goodreads and they can actually see these reviews on the book. But by putting some positive reviews, again, we're getting potential readers excited about this story and we're also building confidence with a potential new reader. So if they can read these um, reviews and go, oh, okay, this is a four or five star review and here's all the stuff this reader really enjoyed about this book, it sounds like a book that I would enjoy too. So that would be a good way to help, like I said, build confidence in a potential new reader and hopefully get them to click that link to take them to buy the book. You have your upcoming release, you have your published books, now author info. Info about you as the writer. This is super important. I read somewhere that one of the most clicked on links on like any web page is the about me or the about us pages because people are just going to be genuinely curious. Like when I go and I thought to myself, what what type of information am I usually looking for when I go to an author's website? Usually it's about me info. Like if I really enjoy an author's writing style, I might go to their website and say, okay, what book do they have coming up next? But then the reason I'm probably there is to go to the about me and see like, do they have information about their writing process? Have they done any interviews that I can read? Do they have FAQs? Like that used to be something that I really, really enjoyed doing was going to my favorite author's websites and then reading all of the information that they had you know, watching interviews, reading interviews, reading blog posts, because I looked up to them as writers and I wanted to know more about them and I wanted to know more about their process. So definitely include an about me page. And your about me page is going to be different from your author bio. So an author bio is generally going to be, like it's gonna be a bit short because it needs to be able to fit like on the, either the back cover of your book or you know the dust jacket flap or on a back page in your book. So you don't want a super lengthy author bio. You want it to be pretty concise and to the point, but on an about me page on your own website, you can really have fun with it. Like you can talk about your favorite recipes, talk about your hobbies, maybe talk about your family or your pets. You can link to interviews that you've taken part in. You could, if you have a YouTube, uh, YouTube channel like I do, you could link to your YouTube channel and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Or maybe you have like one specific video that's talking all about your new book. You could put that there. Or maybe one specific video talking about like your writing process. You could put that there. So people want to know about you and they want to know one about you as a writer, but also two, just about who you are. So think about it. Like when you go to an author's website, what are you usually looking for? That's that's a good thing to keep in mind. And when I thought about that, I thought I'm looking for an about me page and I'm typically looking for more information about that author and about their writing process. So make sure you have an about me page. Um, if you're comfortable with it, an author photo would be awesome. Again, there's just, there's something about like being able to look at somebody's photo that helps you connect with that person or even like video. You can really get connected with somebody quickly through video. So if you're comfortable with having an author photo, 
that would be great to include. If you're not comfortable with putting a photo of yourself on the internet, maybe you could have somebody do like an illustrated version of you. I think those are so fun. I, I want to get one done. Um, I haven't really looked around for anybody to do it, but I love author photos that are illustrated. Um, those are absolutely beautiful. So you could consider something like that, but just like a photo can help people potential readers connect with you and want to know more about you and want to read your books. So it's not just about the book. I mean, the book is going to be the most important thing, but people are going to be interested in you as well. So have fun with your about me page. You don't have to be super professional on an about me page. You can just have fun with it, tell people about you. And uh, that's a great place to like, drop all of those extra links, interviews, videos, etc. Okay, so apart from the about me page, something else that you're going to want on your website is like a newsletter sign up. Now I have a newsletter sign up on my website. Most people have newsletter signups. I do not send newsletters very often. I can tell you that right now. If you're part of my newsletter uh, list, I really appreciate you have, I really appreciate having you on there. I just don't send things out very often but that's because I don't have an upcoming release right now. So if you are planning a book release or you're writing a series and maybe you know, okay, I'm gonna publish one book a year for the next four years or whatever it is, a newsletter sign up is awesome because it's a way for you to get your information and information about your upcoming releases directly into somebody's inbox. They sign up for it. They say, yes, I want this information from you. And then it lands right in their inbox. So if you're like, okay, this book is coming out tomorrow, get ready, or I'm ready for ARC readers, or here's the pre-order link. You can send that directly to all of your newsletter subscribers. So make sure you have a sign up for that. Personally, I use MailChimp for my newsletter um, subscribers, but there are lots of different ways to do newsletters. So there's that your social media links. I told you we would like touch base on YouTube again. So my main avenues, I guess, of social media are YouTube, number one, Instagram, number two. And then I, I honestly, I think I have Twitter on my web on my website, but I do not actively post on Twitter. Like Instagram will post on Twitter for me, but I do not actually post on Twitter. I don't like Twitter. I feel like it's a very negative social media platform for some reason. Um, but those are like the three, if I'm remembering correctly, that I have linked on my website. I might have even taken Twitter down. But anyway, if you have a couple of social media platforms, which I highly recommend you have because you'll want to build your author brand. You can't just put a book out there in the world and expect that people are going to know about it and buy it. You need to build your author brand. And I do have a video on building your author brand. I will link that down below if you are interested. I am, I'm pretty proud of that video. I put a lot of uh, information into that one. So make sure to check that out if you're building your author brand. Um, but you'll want to link to relevant social media. And I generally don't suggest listing like 12 different places where you are online because it's just overwhelming. But if you're like me and you have just a couple that you really focus on, like I said, for me, it's YouTube and Instagram. Those are the ones that I want to give people because that's where I'm actually active. I don't want to give them like a really random social media, like a Tumblr. I used to have a Tumblr. So it's not like I want to tell people, here's my Tumblr and then have them go to it and be like, well, you haven't posted anything in five years or six years. So relevant social media, super important. Make sure you're maintaining your social media. Learn more about building your author brand at that video down below. All right. So there's just some of the things that you'll want to make sure to include on your website. So we talked about newsletter, sign up, social media links, and then like an author bio, author photo, about me page so that people can learn more about you. Now let's go into more like general tips and things to consider when building your author website. The first thing to consider, we literally just touched on this is what is your brand? So if I'm going to a website for a romance author, I'm going to usually expect to see something very different than if I was going to a website for a hardcore sci-fi author, right? So those brands are different. Romance and sci-fi are super different genres. So I would generally expect to see different branding on a website. This isn't going to work across the board for everybody because some authors write in different genres. Like I wrote primarily in young adult fantasy and then I stepped out of that with Pistol Daisy, you know, so that is very much a historical fiction. 
Western, right? So I can't totally build a website around being fantasy and I can't totally build a website around being uh, a Western author, right? So I have to build a website that's a little bit more, uh, I don't know, I guess cohesive across the board, maybe focused a little bit more on just being clean and simple rather than, oh, this is really fantastical or this is very wild westy or whatever you want to call it. But do keep that in mind. Um, keep in mind the genre or genres that you primarily write in and maybe even go to some um, author websites of authors who write within those genres so that you can see how they are branding their personal websites. All right, the next thing is to keep it simple and professional slash uncluttered. There are some author websites that I go to that they offer a lot of good information, but in my humble opinion, they offer too much information. I don't like going to an author's website and being overwhelmed by how much they have on there. I don't like going to an author website and struggling to find my way around because they have 50 different links for me to click on. Again, it's just cluttered and it makes my mind feel messy and I can't find the information that I am looking for. So my suggestion, keep it simple, keep it clean, keep it uncluttered, have only the most important stuff on there. And then, you know, if you want to have all that extra fun stuff, maybe put it, you know, like I said, on the about me page, maybe that's where you can link to all your interviews and link to outside fun things, but you might not want those all on the home page to, you know, make everything look cluttered and messy. Just keep it simple so that somebody who's coming to your website can find the information that they're looking for without having to, you know, click through all your links and go through all your drop downs and search for that one piece of information that they're trying to find, make sure that they can find it quickly and easily. Here is a big one. And oh my gosh, this is something that is such a pain in the butt, honestly, like especially for um, Enchanted Inks website, make sure it works on mobile. Oh my goodness. So your website might look absolutely beautiful on desktop version, but if you pull it up on mobile device, it might be completely wrecked. And that has happened multiple times um, to our Enchanted Ink publishing website because Weebly sometimes, or no, that's Wix. Wix sometimes struggles to uh, understand like the coding and where everything should go. So honestly, one little change on your desktop version can completely mess up your mobile version. Take it from me, take this little piece of advice, Anytime you update your desktop website, make sure you are double checking the mobile version. You can usually pull it up on the computer. You can see what the mobile version is or grab your phone and double check it to make sure that it doesn't look messed up because a lot of people are going to find you on their phone. You know, maybe they're watching YouTube and they click on your link or maybe they're on Instagram and they, you know, go to your link tree and they go to your website. If your website is completely messed up on mobile, they're going to click away from it right away. So make sure that both the desktop and the mobile versions are working correctly. Okay. So another thing to consider with like your branding and with keeping things simple is your color palette. Now a brand is so much more than a color palette. And I talk about this in that building your author brand, um, video, but colors, Colors can express emotion to people and they can give people cer certain feelings, right? So what I don't like is going to a website that is like the color scheme is so busy that, you know, when you go to a website, you know what this is like when you go to the website and the color scheme is so insane that you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm looking at a website from like the early 2000s. That's at least what's in my mind as a millennial is like an early 2000s website that has like a terrible color palette and one of those funny like mouse cursors that like trails stars and it has like music playing in the background. You probably don't want that. So keep my suggestion is to have a limited color palette and it could also be beneficial to use that color palette across all of your social media. So maybe you have like six different colors within the same palette and you use those on Instagram use them on YouTube, like in your YouTube banner, uh, use them on your website and maybe you, I don't know, use them on TikTok. I don't know. I don't have a TikTok, but if you have a nice limited color palette, it can make everything feel super cohesive across your website and all of your social media. So I suggest 
not having a bunch of crazy colors on your website that's gonna give somebody a headache the moment they pull it up. Okay, here's a big one. Here's one that I love to talk about and that is proofread before publishing your website. Now, errors are going to happen. Errors happen all the time. That's just part of, you know, typing on a keyboard. There are going to be errors. So just make sure that you are proofreading before you are publishing that website. Um, anytime you make changes, make sure that you are proofreading it because you don't want there to be glaring typos on your website because you want your website to build confidence in a potential reader. And if a reader is coming to your website and they're seeing a bunch of errors in your copy on your website, they might think, hmm, there's no way I'm going to pick up this author's book because I'm afraid it's gonna be full of errors. So again, an error here or there is not a big deal. It happens to all of us, but proofread before publication so that you can make sure you're catching the majority, if not all of those errors before it goes live. All right, here's a little tip, but I do feel like it should be said. If you are putting any type of images on your website, like an author photo or book cover photos, make sure they are high quality and high resolution. Um, I've gone to some author websites that have photos that are super, super grainy. So it just, it, it does bring down the quality of the website. It makes the website not feel as professional, not feel as clean and polished. Um, so make sure if you're going to put a photo up on your website, that it's just crisp and clear. And it's not going to be, like I said earlier, like a grainy, early 2000s website photo. We are in 2022 now, my friends, the year of the clear, high quality JPEG. So make sure all of your images look nice before you are blasting them out on the internet for potential readers to see. Now, the last thing to consider is something that I touched on earlier, and that is what are you looking for when you go to an author's website? So if you think of your favorite authors, authors who, you know, maybe you've like, harmlessly stalked them online a little bit because, you know, like I said earlier, I've totally done this with my favorite authors because I want to know more about them. I want to know more about their writing process. That's something that I look for when I go to an author's website. What do you look for? Do you go to an author's website because you want to sign up for their newsletter? Okay, if that's something that you really look for, again, make sure your newsletter sign up is right there on the front page so that people can find it really easily. Do you go to an author's website to learn about their upcoming releases or maybe to learn about, okay, this author has a 12 book series and all these spinoffs, what order do I need to read them in? So is that maybe something that you want to include on your website as a reading order for your series and all of your spinoffs? Think, and maybe even right now when you're done with this video, go to some of these authors' websites see what they have there and see what you're naturally drawn to. Again, I am naturally drawn to the about me pages and the extra information. What are you drawn toward? And then once you know what you are drawn toward on somebody's author website, consider adding it to your website if it fits. Like for example, a reading list obviously wouldn't work for my website because I don't have a series, so there's no reading list. People can read my books in any order they want to because at this point, they are all standalones, even though Pistol Daisy will eventually someday be a four book series. So that is just something to consider. You could uh, maybe take a little bit of time, pour yourself a cup of coffee, and uh, you know, make like a fun little afternoon of it, going to your favorite author's websites and writing down what you really love maybe some things that you don't like and what you're looking for when you go to those authors' websites. So with these tips, you should be well on your way to having a beautiful, professional, and most importantly, helpful author website. Because again, this author website is meant to give potential readers important information about you, your books, and how they can get in contact with you. And that is something that I think I might have forgotten to put on my list is on your website, make sure that you have a way for people to contact you. Um, unless you don't want people contacting you for some reason, um, you could put like a little contact form if you don't want to give out your personal email address, stuff like that. But again, that's up to you. You might not want potential, you know, potential readers and like strangers on the internet contacting you, but if you don't mind that, or if you're really trying to build up your um, online presence in your community, you might want to have a contact form or, you know, link back to your Instagram so people can shoot you a DM, whatever that is. It's just sometimes nice to allow people a way to get to talk to you and get to know you more. So I think that is the last thing. 
Thank you guys so much for voting on this video. I hope you found it helpful. This is a video that I've wanted to um, share with you guys for a long time. So I'm really glad that it won the poll so that I could finally film it and share it with you. If you have any additional questions about author websites or what you should or should not include, feel free to drop those down below. An author website is not like, there aren't set in stone rules, but I do think that these guidelines will really Guidelines. Yeah, they're not rules. They're more like guidelines. Um, they will help you on your way to, again, creating a beautiful, professional, helpful author website. All right, my friends, that is all I have for you today. Make sure to subscribe, like this video so YouTube knows to advertise it to other people who are looking for similar information so that they can find this easily. And uh, hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos go live. I try to post at least once a week. Um, if you want to see my previous video, I'll link that down below. It was a day in the life vlog. I think it turned out pretty nice if you're interested in watching it. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!